real life, this is what I look like first thing in the morning. Pretty scary. <laughs> hey guys, what's up? Today I am going to be sharing with you all my morning and evening skincare routine. Um, I showed you know my morning skincare routine recently in a vlog, uh, but I thought I would add it in here so you can see kind of the continuum of what what I do and 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 kind of how I go about my morning and evening skincare routine. First up, I um, in the morning I wash my face with a 2% salicylic acid face wash, directing the wash to acne prone areas around my nose, jaw area, forehead. Um, if you're somebody who is bothered by excessive oiliness or shininess, you could do this in those same areas as well. This is the 2% salicylic acid face wash that I use every morning, but um, FYI, I don't use this to quote cleanse my face. Okay, I'm not. I'm not trying to to get dirt off or anything like that. I just woke up. I wasn't rolling around in the mud all night, okay? This is merely to utilize the 2% salicylic acid in this face wash, or BHA, uh, beta hydroxy acid, merely to get a short contact time of that reagent onto my face. It constant, it's lipophilic, meaning it concentrates in, in oily, oily surfaces in our sebaceous oil gland, okay? Only really it needs a pretty short con contact time as occurs with a face wash. And then when you rinse the residua of the wash off, some of the salicylic acid still stays behind in the sebaceous, in the sebaceous gland to give you um, a little bit long lasting oil control. It also helps lightly exfoliate the face and gently low risk as far as acids go for uh, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation, meaning it's, uh, it's of the acids, it's actually pretty low likelihood to irritate you to the degree that uh, it will cause your irritation to heal with a dark mark. So I really love it. Used 2% salicylic acid my since adolescence as a face wash. Gives good control. And uh, I use this exclusively in the morning, okay? And you'll see why in the evening. Uh, in the evening I use tretinoin to my face and tretinoin should not be uh, applied simultaneously um, or at the same time as BHAs or AHAs. Um, because they can be just extremely irritating together um, and sometimes that irritation can potentially compromise the efficacy of the retinoid. I use, um, th this is the one that I'm currently using, La Roche Posay. La Roche -Posay. Uh, this also includes the L'Oreal uh, patented micro exfoliating LHA, which is really just a tiny modified, chemically modified version of salicylic acid that penetrates theoretically a little bit more deeply um, and exfoliates slightly more a little bit more deeply but whatever all the acne studies were done with straight up salicylic acid and that's really why I'm going for this I like it because it is fragrance free um, and uh, very gentle I also love a uh, zap zit which is a 2% BHA face wash I'll list some of my favorite BHA face washes down below but again I don't uh, like leave on products I like wash form so I just start off with a little bit of tap lukewarm water to rinse my face and then I put this on. All right, so I just got my face wet and with just tap water and you know, this comes out pretty liquidy. You don't need a whole lot, you know, don't go, don't go putting the whole bottle on your face. More, less is more. You don't need, I mean, you just need a thin, thin, thin mono layer of contact time. You don't need a copious, a copious heaping of, uh, of this. This isn't a, uh, you know, Thanksgiving dinner here on your face. Okay, just like I said, and really just gentle circles. Again, if you're new here, none of those like, none of those uh, cleansing brushes or buffing pads or any sort of facial gizmo or anything like that. As far as the temperature of the water, lukewarm, not extremes, you know, not no steaming or no ice cold water. People always want to go doing all of these aggressive maneuvers. Your skin is a barrier, and so it doesn't like, you know, keep it, it, it it's intended to keep offensive things out, like, I don't know, scalding water. So back off on the dial of the uh, temperature. Don't, don't freeze your face. No, it's not good for the skin. It doesn't, you know, anti-age the skin or prevent collagen breakdown. It's really just irritating as heck. Uh, so stop doing that. You know, if you don't have acne um, and you're not interested in this, this is totally unnecessary, okay? You don't really need to wash your face first thing in the morning. Again, I'm not cleansing here. I'm really just using this wash to get the salicylic acid on my face. 
and I've had sufficient contact time, so I'm going to rinse it off. Now, the act of doing this, which is a uh, an exfoliant, okay, in combination with water, which is an irritant, are both things that together um, are going to exfoliate my skin, and in doing so, set the stage for something called transepidermal water loss, which is evaporation of water out of the skin that leads to drying, okay? Dry skin, dry skin, period. There's no such thing as dehydrated skin, okay? There's dry skin and that is it, okay? Um, and that generally occurs as a result of an impaired skin barrier, impaired by virtue of the crap that you're putting on your face, not, uh, not the fact that you're not drinking like 10 gallons of water. You, yeah, that has nothing to do with it. It's, it's more that your face is dry and irritated or you're somebody who has eczema and you have a tendency to have a little bit of an impaired skin barrier. Okay, talking aside, I'm just gonna rinse this off right quick. And do make sure you get all of it off. All right, now my face is wet and I'm just exfoliated it with a, a gentle 2% BHA face wash. Now to put the breaks as quickly as possible on the transepidermal water loss so my skin will stay plump and hydrated and look youthful and anti-aged, I'm just gonna put some dollops of this Hot Lava Super Plumping Gel Cream. This is a humectant, not a straight plain moisturizer. It's not occlusive. It's just like a jelly that slows down the evaporation of water. And I just pat it there under on my cheekbones and then I just massage it in. You really don't need much of this product at all. I like it because it is fragrance free. Its shortcoming is that it has a preservative in it called methyl chloroisothiazinolone, which is not a deadly sin, okay? But if you are allergic to it, which some people can be allergic to it, get rashes from it, then avoid that. And if that is you, and an alternative that you should try, ooh, I'm getting water loss here, but it's okay, I'm doing it for you guys, is to get the Neutrogena Hydra Boost Gel Cream Extra Dry Sensitive Skin. Don't just go willy-nilly picking up any Neutrogena Hydra Boost in the jar. You gotta get this one, okay? Because this is the one without fragrance in it. They put fragrance in the other one and it just completely ruined it. So don't get that one. And if you're in the UK, an alternative for you is the Simply Pure uh, Leave-On Night Mask. Yes, I said that right, the Leave-On Night Mask. All right, so now that I have my humectanty moist layer on and um, you know some of that evaporation is slowing down, now is the most important step. If you don't do this and focus on this, then just, then just go back to bed, okay? This is your sunscreen, all right? This is gonna prevent you from uh, from uh, aging, basically. Uh, this protects against UVB and UVA. I love this Elta MD UV Clear Broad Spectrum SPF 46. Um, you know, people will want a recommendation for oily skin, dry skin, combination skin, skin that's skin that's uh, been around the world in the 80 days. Listen, skin types are largely promoted by the cosmetic industry. There is skin, and it can have a skin disease like rosacea, seborrheic dermatitis eczema, those skin conditions can present with redness, dryness, you got acne, you've got oily skin, but at the end of the day, this is unlikely to be offensive to most people. I can never say 100%, okay? It's probably gonna sting somebody, but whatever. Um, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean to sting. Here's what I do, I put it on as best I can to all areas of my face and neck, and then I put it on again, okay? Um, this, unlike, unlike the BHA face wash where you don't really need a ton, uh, this you wanna keep keeping it on, okay? Um, so the other key is if this is not an affordable sunscreen to you, I can list some more sunscreens that I adore, j'adore, down below. Um, for you to perusal through and decide what you think is in your budget because this is the most important, most important things you do. Get them around your eyes, okay? No, you know, don't put it in your eye itself, but get it all over the eyelids and the in the uh, medial canthus area here, the lateral canthus. This is where skin cancers pop up. You don't want that, okay? This is where crow's feet pop up too, and you know, and you gotta go doing things like like Botox and filler and all that expensive stuff. Do not forget your ears, okay? Um, skin cancers on the ears are incredibly, you know, are pretty common right here on, on the top. 
Don't forget your upper cutaneous lip either. Um, nobody wants nobody wants a skin cancer there. I mean, for the most part, aside from melanoma, you know, the non-melanoma skin cancers, they're not really, they're not deadly, okay? They're not going to, you know, put you in an early grave, but they're really going to complicate your life. And, you know, they're, they're a major burden to deal with. And, you know, you have to have a surgery oftentimes to remove them. Surgery leaves you behind with a scar. You've got to have a reconstruction. I mean, you don't want all of that. Just put the sunscreen on. The studies show that it will help, uh, help lower those chances. And uh, you may say, don't only people who burn probably need sunscreen, right? Wrong. People who never burn still need sunscreen. This is great, right? I just applied this all over my face. I've pretty much got the layer that I'm intending for, and I'm gonna I'm gonna do other things. This alone is not good enough during my day. I need a broad brimmed hat when I'm crossing the parking lot. The UV index here in Houston today is eight. That is quite high, okay? Um, but you still need to do this regardless of what the UV index is, because it's a behavior, okay? It's something you have to learn how to do and get used to, like brushing your teeth. You don't only brush your teeth when you bend on candy okay you brush your teeth every day okay I mean you, you, you know you just need to same same holds true with this um, and then I'm gonna reapply this I'm gonna be indoors most of the day today I'm gonna reapply this at least three times before I get home tonight and go to the gym uh, because you know sunlight comes in through the window ages the skin sunlight you know as I'm crossing to and from in the parking lot you know you, you need to reapply this wears off even the exclusive mineral sunscreens um, are gonna wear off so you need to reapply you need to reapply all right and then it's just a little added bell and whistle in my skincare routine I have been enjoying this color science total eye no it's not an eye cream I mean it's marketed as an eye cream but it's basically a tinted SPF okay the reason I like using a little tinted SPF it's SPF 35 can you see that the reason I like using a tinted SPF like this is that it has an inactive ingredient in addition to the sunscreen called iron oxides that can brought block excuse me block a little bit of visible light that leads to post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation melasma dark spots and that sort of thing so I just like daubing a little here um, and it's got this jazzy applicator or whatever but you know there are many tinted sunscreens out there and they have a variety of names like Mary and Joseph and BB and CC and cutie I don't know I mean look for a, a tint that you like in the inactive ingredient iron oxides and a good SPF of 30 to 50 okay I don't care what its name is um, and, and it has to be fragrance free and free of essential oils. This is the sunscreen that I like to use on my lips. Can you guys see that? It's Vanny Cream. Uh, most people probably won't like this, but whatever. It's uh, um, exclusively mineral sunscreen, so it's not irritating. So I like to put a little bit of that on uh, and then reapply that throughout the day because. And then this is far and away the best mascara and the only mascara I care to use. It is the Maybelline Colossal. I don't like using the waterproof one. I only like this one. Um, I think this is like, I don't know, some version of black. Glam black maybe. I think I alternate depending on, because I don't ever check. I think I alternate between glam black and black black. So yeah, that's my morning uh, skincare routine. So I'm gonna buzz along to my day and I will check in with you guys this evening after the gym and you can see my nighttime skincare routine. Guess who's back? It's the end of the day. Time to uh, do my nighttime skincare routine. Um, normally I do a portion of this in the shower. I love you guys, but not that much. We're not going in there. So I'm gonna do it all out here and I will tell you the part that I do in the shower as I'm doing it. But the very first thing that I do is I actually wash my hands in the evening uh, before doing my skincare routine with this Attitude, it's so cute. Fragrance-free foaming hand wash, love this stuff. Very, very gentle, uh, great for people with eczema, dry hands. I do this because I cook at night, you know, I make dinner and I get, you know, garlic and onion re residua and spice on my fingers and I'm gonna take my contact lenses out and then I'm gonna wash my face and 
I don't want to get all that on my face. It's going to cause irritation, stinging, um, and if I put it in my eye, I'll, I'll be upset. Um, so I'm going to do that. All right, and the very first thing I'm going to do is take off my mascara, and I've got about four, four applications worth of sunscreen on my face and neck, okay? I'm just going to, I just uh, use an oil-based cleanser to start breaking up the mascara, and some of the sunscreen, I really only do this on my face. This is the Hot Labo Cleansing Oil. I love this, um, and I solely use it for dissolving the mascara and dissolving the um, some of the sunscreen. It is not necessary, um, but I find it's a lot gentler, and if you're somebody who wears a lot of makeup and finds that you're having to scrub your face to get the makeup off, I recommend doing this approach. It's a lot gentler, but I just get um, a little bit of the oil in my hands, and you know, some people will add a little drop of water to this. Some, um, you know, like emulsifiers and things like that in it that kind of thick, will thicken it up, make it foam a little bit, um, and then I just pat it down on my eyes like this. I don't rub, I just pat, um, and then I'll gently open my eyes and dust the oil over the eyelashes. I believe that doing this um, helps the eyelash health a little, helps to promote good eyelash health solely because uh, you're not scrubbing and irritating your eyelashes and causing them to break, so I think it helps. Then I just sweep a little over my face for the sunscreen. Now, if you've got a lot of makeup, I don't know how much more it would take of this. I suspect not a lot, um, but it goes on really well. I prefer this to the DHC one. I've tried the DHC one before, and I don't like it. But I just pat a little down, and, you know, just it's very relaxing to do this. Especially after a hard day. You're like, uh, I'm just going to rub this in. This, however, needs to be washed off, okay? It cannot be left on the skin. It's a great oil cleanser. It has olive oil in it, which you can remember back to my oils and skincare video. Olive oil um, is actually not a great moisturizer and uh, can exacerbate transepidermal water loss. So I guess it's a logical ingredient when you're trying to break stuff up off of your face, but don't leave it on there. Um, so normally what I do is I just skip on over to the shower and get in the shower and, you know, uh, shampoo my hair and while I'm in there um, I don't like to get my face wet any more times than I have to so while I'm in the shower that is when I'm going to wash my face solely for washing off the broken up makeup and um, and sunscreen or the broken up mascara sunscreen combination and this is the um, the cleanser that I I am currently using and have used in the past and really enjoy. It is the Neutrogena Ultra Gentle Hydrating Cleanser, the creamy formula. I love this. It's fantastic. You all have seen me use a variety of other cleansers along with this double cleanse method and I have many that I like and love. The Hot Alabo Cleansing Foam is fantastic as well as are the CeraVe Hydrating Face Wash. I use that. Um, I have one of those at my mom's house so when I go over there I use that. But um, I'm just going to wash, wash off this broken up mascara and sunscreen with this product now. In my shower, I use lukewarm water, not ice cold, not scalding hot water, okay? Uh, scalding hot water in particular really, really impairs the skin barrier, okay? Um, some people will ask, can I just leave this oil on my face? No, I would not do that. First of all, we've got broken up uh, makeup on here. All this needs to come off. A lot of people ask me, do I use this on my neck? I really don't. Um, I find that just getting in the shower and the, the water, um, being in the shower is enough to get it off of my neck. So I don't end up doing this incidentally on my neck, but uh, you could. Um, okay, and that's really all of this that I need. And but you don't need to scrub or use a washcloth or anything like that. This is this is exfoliating, you guys. This is exfoliating, <laughs> okay? Um, believe it or not, this is dislodging some stuff from the day. And you just want to be really gentle. Even if you're, you know, you feel like your pores are clogged, your pores are probably irritated and inflamed and swelling up going, stop scrubbing me. Okay. Now I'm just going to rinse it off. All right, so it's all rinsed off, and at this point, you know, I'm hopping out of the shower and my face, entire body, and my hair are wet. Um, so as soon as I skip on out of the shower, I do not use towels if you're new here, because towels just, um, you know, remove water from the skin and 
grow mold and they're not necessary. Uh, but as soon as I get out of the shower to my uh, dripping wet face, I, I dab a little bit of the, the humectant, the Hadalabo Super Plumping Gel Cream to slow that transepidermal water loss on my face. And I get it on there pretty quickly. And again, just kind of pat rub it in, pat rub it in. And you know, at this point I am completely wet from head to toe. And so from head to toe, I moisturize with the CeraVe moisturizing cream. I love this stuff. Um, as somebody with eczema, this has really helped me. Um, it uh, is great for really all types of skin, <laughs> honestly. And you can use it on your face. So um, I just go ahead and rub it on in very gently and I put it on my neck. There are fewer sebaceous glands on the skin of the neck, so you need a lot of good, plain, fragrance-free moisturizers. If you wanna know how to incorporate a serum at this point, you're, you're at the wrong channel. There's no incorporation of serum here. This is it. Serum is a, uh, is a basically just a moisturizer, okay? So, um, you know, depending on its thickness, it could be a cream or a lotion or an oil-based, whatever, but. Serums do not, uh, do not deliver the active ingredients any more efficaciously than creams do. Um, that, is a, that is a skin myth. Okay, um, and so um, if you all started following me along with my different tips videos, you'll recall that when I apply my retinoids, um, I like to um, apply it to a freshly moisturized dry face. So I'm just gonna let that uh, dry on there, okay? And while it's doing that, I'm gonna come in just like I did in my different routine with a little bit of the CeraVe healing ointment. This stuff is fantastic. I find it superior to Aquaphor personally. Um, it has like, I don't know, 5% more petrolatum. And I just kind of grease the orifices because I don't want I don't want my tretinoin getting in these areas. And I put a little, you know, around my eyes. People ask about putting tretinoin near their eyes. Um, I'm not gonna recommend that, you know, a general audience go doing that. Um, if, you're, if your um, treating physician has prescribed you a tretinoin cream to be used around the eyes, then do it as they say. But, um, you know, for a general audience, uh, it's not good around the eyes and cause a lot of irritation and problems. So um, I don't want it going around my eyes, so I just, Put a little bit of this there um, and that kind of makes a protective barrier to keep it from going there and we're just going to let it dry on there and while it's drying on there um, i'm going to um, i put tretinoin on at night time it should be applied at night uh, to a um, dry face okay and i like to moisturize my face before i put it on there um, because when the skin is is not moisturized and it's dry, it's more prone to irritation, okay? No, that's not gonna compromise the penetration of the tretinoin, okay? My tretinoin is in a cream already, so it's like, if it were compromising the penetration, then, you know, the, the actual, you know, then the, the tretinoin cream, how, how would that work? I mean, the logic just doesn't follow. So yes, the package insert will tell you to do the opposite. They'll tell you to, to wash your face, dry your face, put tretinoin on, and then put your moisturizer on. But when you do that, you can also just start rubbing the tretinoin all over willy-nilly with the moisturizer. I find it makes things difficult. This is a lot, a lot more easy to tolerate. You can do it the other way, however, and it is fine, okay? There's no right or wrong answer is what I'm saying. Okay, um, but at this point, you know, everybody wants to know how long do I need to wait until to put the tretinoin on there until the skin is dry, okay? It's moisturized and dry, all right? So you don't ever want to put tretinoin um, or any retinoid um, onto a wet skin because water is an irritant and putting the two together is a vicious combo. But you don't need a lot of the tretinoin, okay? I mean, you really don't, all right? I'm not gonna get into details about my prescription tretinoin and like how much I'm using and that kind of thing. Um, you know, you should talk to your treating healthcare provider about that, but just like I did with Differin, I'm just gonna put it, you know, you really do not need, you really don't need a lot of tretinoin, okay? Um, and I'm just gonna, you know, same way I did with Differin these areas. I've been using this, so if you're new here, I, uh, I used Differin, which is a Dapolene, a retinoid, uh, for an entire year last year. And then in January of this year, 2000 and, year are we in? Oh my goodness. 
in 2018, yeah, 2018, I uh, started using tretinoin uh, instead of different, and I used it uh, for the first month every night just as I did different, and had no, no irritation, peeling, any problems, and tolerated it fine. I did it just, I've been doing it just in this manner, and it's been going swimmingly, so we are now, what, in, in April, Abril, and it's going well for me, so that is how I use it and how I apply it. I don't put it on my neck, um, and I don't recommend people in a general audience put it on their neck. Like I said, there are fewer oil glands there. The skin on the neck's a lot thinner, more prone to dryness and irritation, okay? Just focus your fragrance-free moisturizers on the neck, uh, not tretinoin and those kinds of things. Now, a point that I'll make though about the tretinoin, you'll see that I am not using any other active ingredients at this point. I just walk away, okay? Because I don't want to compromise the efficacy of my tretinoin with excess irritation, okay? So that is the only active ingredient I use. When I was using Differin, Adapalene, okay? Adapalene can be used along with benzoyl peroxide, um, and so I was using it that way. I've since stopped using benzoyl peroxide leave-on products on my face, um, and I only use tretinoin. And you know, my acne, knock on wood, <laughs> knock on, what is this, marble? I don't know, tile, annoying surface here. Um, I haven't had any problems with my acne whatsoever, um, and it's really been working well for me. So I'm not using benzoyl peroxide anymore um, on my face. I'm not using it in a wash form. I only use um, tretinoin at night, and then in the morning I use salicylic acid, 2%. So that is the other active ingredient that I use. And I use it in the morning because it should not be used at the same time as the tretinoin. So that is how it's been going. But you guys wanted an update, and you wanted to see kind of my routine, so that is it. Um, it's very similar to what I was doing before, only with a different act, with a different retinoid. So, um, yeah. But if you get a lot of dryness and peeling and irritation from tretinoin, that's to be expected. I didn't have that, but I've been using a, um, a retinoid for every night for a year in advance, so, and I've always used um, salicylic acid, so my skin's kind of conditioned to that. Um, so I didn't have any problems with excessive irritation, dryness, peeling. But if you do, um, you know, you've got to keep going with the moisturizers and avoid the urge to try and exfoliate the skin um, because the dryness, irritation, peeling, flaking, that is exfoliation occurring. That is a tretinoin exfoliating your, your skin. So don't try and exfoliate exfoliation. It's only going to make the problem worse and it can make your face red, and irritated, and inflamed and not good, okay? Um, and most often people ask about purging. Purging is really not even that super common. Common. Honestly, what happens more often than not is a bad irritant dermatitis from the tretinoin um, to being too irritating and, and whatnot. So um, that is more, more likely to be what's going on. And if that sounds like you, you're having problems, be sure and see your treating healthcare provider to find out what is going on. But anyways, guys, that is my full skincare routine. I hope you liked it. If you enjoyed it, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.